Nuclear power is currently seeing a renaissance in big parts of the world. But many of the newly planned nuclear power plants use a fuel that's much more enriched in radioactive compounds than the currently used one. Some experts are raising concerns about it. Let's have a look. Small modular reactors have recently gained popularity. The idea is that these reactors will be small enough to be transported so they can be produced in a factory and then shipped to wherever you want them. This could make the construction of nuclear power plants faster and cheaper. Whether that will work out remains to be seen, but the small reactor boom has greatly increased demand for a special type of fuel called HALU. That might sound like a greeting for nuclear engineers. Hey Lou, how are you doing? But it stands for high assay, low enriched uranium. What's that? Well, natural uranium has about 0.7% of the radioactive compound that's uranium-235. Or the rest is almost all uranium-238. The currently most widely used nuclear reactor types that are pressurized water reactors use what's called low enriched uranium. That's more than the natural level, but below 5% of uranium-235. Then there's HALU, which has anything between 5 and 20%. And then there is high enriched uranium that can be used for nuclear weapons, which is anything above 90%. HALU is becoming popular as a fuel not just because it's necessary to build smaller reactors, but also because it's more efficient in using the fissile materials and because it generates less waste. Unfortunately, the biggest exporter of enriched uranium is currently Russia, and they have recently become somewhat unpopular. This is why the United States are now building their own enrichment facilities, and also the UK has proudly announced a plan to do so. So HALU facilities are becoming more numerous and that has brought up safety concerns. Most notably, there was recently a comment published in Science magazine whose authors claimed that using HALU much increases the risk of nuclear proliferation. They write, HALU above about 20% uranium-235 could be used to make a practical weapon. This sounds alarming, but it's misleading. First, it's not like you need to reach a certain level of enrichment to get a nuclear chain reaction. It's just that the lower the enrichment, the more of the material you need, and that gets impractical quickly. If you have weapon-grade uranium, you need something like 55 kilograms or so to get a chain reaction. If you have 20% enriched uranium, you'd need something like 500 kilograms. With 15%, you need a ton of it, and so on. You can do it theoretically, but practical is something else. Even if someone would manage to legally acquire a ton of HALU, what would they do with it? The biggest difficulty in building the first atomic bombs was to get the material to detonate efficiently, and that required a lot of tinkering to get the fissile material to join at the right moment in exactly the right configuration. Just exactly how it works is today the most top secret of all top secrets, and that was with highly enriched uranium or plutonium. If you have a ton of material rather than 50 kilograms, that isn't going to make it easier. Robert Hayes, professor for nuclear engineering at North Carolina State University, explains the problem as follows. Until fissile concentrations get very, very high, the ability to rapidly increase reactivity enough to produce a viable nuclear yield is extremely difficult. The whole process is continually trying to disassemble itself through thermal expansion and requisite phase change, which is always the case in an inadvertent criticality event. To do better Better than can be done with high explosives may be possible, but if the superpowers can't do it, I really have no concern that others will do better. In an interview with Verge, Charles Forsberg from MIT said similarly, unless they're a whole lot better than I am and the colleagues I work with, a subnational group like a terrorist group doesn't have a chance. Basically, they're saying that building a nuclear bomb from HALU is more difficult than enriching uranium and building a 
bomb with that. And if you're enriching already, why steal Halu? That makes no sense. And that's leaving aside that carrying off a ton of material unnoticed isn't all that easy, and a nuclear power plant doesn't have that much of the stuff lying around to begin with. This is why most experts consider the risk increase from Halu to be moderate for what nuclear bombs are concerned. But there are other problems with the stuff. One is the issue of dirty bombs, an explosive device that sprays radio radioactive compounds around rather than causing a chain reaction. It's technically not difficult to build and could contaminate large areas. The risk of someone acquiring enough radioactive material to build one generally increases with more nuclear facilities, including HALU production sites. The other problem is that some countries might use HALU production as a pretense to produce highly enriched uranium. So yes, radioactive compounds are dangerous and HALU needs high safety standards. Everyone agrees on that anyway. But claiming that one could build a nuclear bomb with it is stretching the truth. And in any case, who wouldn't like to have a three-eyed fish? Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered and they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.